Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Waxter Center. My name is Vinnie DeMarco. I'm the uh, president of the Maryland Healthcare for All Coalition, and thrilled to be here today to talk about great progress at the national and state level on making high-cost drugs more affordable for Marylanders and people across the country, and to talk about what we have to do next and what we have to do to build on this progress. I want to first uh, thank the Waxter Center for hosting us. Let's have a big hand for the Waxter Center, a really terrific institution that I know does so much for the people of uh, Baltimore. Thank you for what you do for people in Baltimore and for hosting this event in your beautiful uh, facility. This is the final of a group of forums that we have held all across Maryland over the last three weeks where we've talked with Marylanders about the Inflation Reduction Act. Thank you, President Biden, Vice President Harris, and all that has done to make high-cost drugs more affordable for people on Medicare. And we've talked about the Prescription Drug Affordability Board that could not have been enacted without Mayor Scott's leadership. And that has been in place, and we're going to hear about what that board is doing in Maryland to go beyond what the Inflation Reduction Act does. So we have two goals today. One is to share with you the progress we have made and what's left to do. That's number one. And number two is to hear from you about how high-cost drugs are hurting you, your family, and your friends. This is very, very important. The Prescription Drug Affordability Board is working to make high-cost drugs more affordable for Marylanders, but they need to know what does it mean for a drug to be unaffordable? How does it hurt people when drugs cost too much? So we are going to do several things. We're going to have a presentation from people here on the stage here. We're going to talk to you a little bit. Then we're going to answer questions from people here at Waxer Center, from other coalition partners, from the media who have questions. And then, after all that's over, we're going to give you an opportunity to privately talk with some of our team. And I want you to stand up. Suzanne Schlotman, Stephanie Clapper, and there's Catherine Kirk Robbins over there uh, with, with the uh, 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 phone there. And uh, Sheena OG uh, is here, and Jonathan McKinney. Where's Jonathan? You can go to one of them afterwards and tell your story. And we are live streamed here, so if you're live stream watching us, you can't obviously talk to us here, but you want to tell your story, go to healthcareforall.com slash rxinput. Healthcareforall.com slash rxinput. People here can certainly do that later on also, spread the word. We want to hear how high cost drugs are hurting you, your friends, and your family, and we will pass all that information on to the board. You should also go to the board's website, pdab, pdab.maryland.gov, pdab.maryland.gov, to find out about the board's meetings or send your comments to the board. So those are our goals today. One other goal before everybody leaves here, we want everybody up here and all of you to gather behind our big Healthcare for All banner for a photo that we want to send all around the world of all the support for Healthcare for All and making high cost drugs more affordable. So that's what we're going to do today. And I want to thank uh, Senator Chris Van Hollen, who couldn't be here today, but has been at our previous forums, Senator Ben Cardin. And the two of them helped to lead the fight for high cost uh, prescription drug affordability through the Inflation Reduction Act. And we thank them very much uh, for that. But right now, I'm going to turn the mic over to one of my all-time heroes who, when he was a Baltimore City Councilman, was always there fighting for public health, for health care, and just for justice in the city of Baltimore. And all of us working on these issues were thrilled when he became mayor. And when we had to fight Big Pharma in 2019 to pass the Prescription Drug Affordability Board, we couldn't have done it without Brandon Scott. And then, since then, he's been one of our leaders in getting the message out about how important this work is. 
and I know that he does so much more for Baltimore City. As a Baltimore City resident, I thank him for that. So with that, let me introduce the Honorable, the Mayor of Baltimore, Brandon M. Scott. Thank you, Vinny. The check is in the mail. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, not only uh, for your leadership, but really for your partnership and for pulling all of us together to talk about lowering prescription costs for Baltimoreans. I'd like to start off by thanking our partners today, uh, obviously uh, Vinny in the Maryland Health Care for All Coalition and his team, Andrew York, the executive director from the Maryland Prescription Drug Affiliability Board, ARP uh, of Maryland, Jim Gutman, who is here representing AARP, Jim Campbell, uh, president of AARP Maryland and chair of the Baltimore City's Commission on Aging and Retirement. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for being here. Our wonderful deputy health commissioner who leads up all of our work around seniors and elder adults in Baltimore, uh, the health department team who helped organize this event at the Waxing Center, and of course, everyone at the Waxer Center for having us here and having me back. It's been a few months, but also want to recognize our Congressman, Congressman Sarbanes, uh, who is here, someone who fights for Baltimore in D.C. each and every day. Uh, we had Congressional Black Caucus Week in, in D.C. last week, and all of my fellow mayors were saying to me, like, oh, man, do you have a meeting set up with your congressional people? And I said, you guys don't talk to them all the time like me? No, I don't, actually. I'm talking to other Congress people today, not, not my own. Uh, also, uh, want, to, want to thank everybody that is here today, uh, including uh, Reverend Dr. Sandra Connor uh, from the President of the Baptist Ministers Night Conference of Baltimore. This is something that we are proud to partner on with all of you to hear from our, our residents to ensure that the board's final recommendations are informed by the lived experiences of our residents, particularly older residents who are here today at the Waxen Center for healthy and active aging. Uh, the high cost of prescription drugs presents a serious bar barrier to care for most of our vulnerable communities. Far too often, our residents, especially older adults, are forced to choose between life-saving medication and other necessities like rent or groceries. This is unacceptable anywhere, especially in the wealthiest country in the history of the world. It drives uh, insurance premiums up, placing additional uh, financial burdens that get in the way of care seekers getting the treatment that they need to lead healthy and fulfilling lives. The United States spends significantly more on prescription drugs than any other high-income country. And without a rate-setting mechanism in place, pharmaceutical manufacturers charge whatever they want or they deem the market can bear. As a result, Americans have the highest spending per capita on prescription drugs among high-income countries. And these costs are truly unnecessary, despite claiming uh, that one of the main reasons drug costs are so high is an investment in research. Large drug manufacturers, or big pharma, as Vinny always calls them, spend far more in advertising than they do on research and development. Not only is this a burden on our residents, but our city's fiscal budget is also impacted by the high cost of prescription drugs. Just as no Maryland family should have to choose between their medication and other necessities, no Maryland county or municipality should be forced to choose between funding core cool public services and the health coverage for its employees. Even if you don't have a prescription, taxpayers throughout Maryland are burdened by this issue. In addition to paying for your own drug coverage, our state taxes support the growing cost of drug coverage from Medicaid, prisons, and state, local, and university employees, retirees, and dependents. This may seem like an insurmountable uh, issue. However, Maryland has the first, the nation's first prescription drug affordability board, which was created to help make high-cost prescription drugs more affordable for residents of our state. Simply put, drugs don't work if people can't afford to take them. And we are here today to listen to you all so that the board can present the strongest recommendations possible to make prescription drugs more affordable for residents throughout Maryland. So thank you all for being here. We look forward to hearing about all your lived experiences so that we can progress towards a future where prescription drugs no longer serve as a barrier to care for our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, very eloquently put. As the mayor said, drugs don't work if people can't afford them. 
Drugs don't work if people can't afford them. We are thrilled that of our 10 members of the Congress in, in Maryland, nine of them voted for the Inflation Reduction Act. And they are great humans who did so much to make that law work. And we're very thrilled that with us is Representative John Sarbanes. You know, in 29 and 2010, when the Affordable Care Act was being debated and passed, who was at the forefront? John Sarbanes on that Commerce Committee just fighting for it. And he would call us and say, we're making progress. We're going to get it done. And at the worst times, he was there making sure it happened. And he was one of the key people in getting that wonderful Affordable Care Act passed. And when they tried to repeal the Affordable Care Act, who was at the forefront of keeping them from doing that? John Sarbanes. And now, when President Biden and Vice President Harris got us the Inflation Reduction Act. Again, who was at the front lines? John Sarbanes. He was making sure that that law is as strong as possible on making high-cost drugs more affordable and protecting our climate, and protecting our climate. He's been a hero uh, on, on both, of these, uh, both of these critical issues. And he is one of my all-time heroes, and I'm thrilled that he's here, Representative John Sarbanes. Thank you very much, Vinny. And Vinny gave me a lot of credit for being on the front lines in terms of trying to make uh, health care more affordable for Americans. But uh, Vinny and all the people who work with him have been on the front lines for many more years than I have. In fact, created that space on the front line for others to step forward, elected officials, and make sure that we did the right thing for the people of this state and the people of our country. So uh, Vinny, thanks to you and, and all the advocates who have been part of these coalitions. And, and thank you for sponsoring, as you have across the state, this particular opportunity to uh, bring people together and have them share their perspective on the high cost of prescription drugs uh, so that this amazing board that was set up in Maryland, the first of its kind in the country, the Pres Prescription Drug Affordability Board, can make sure that the work they do is meeting exactly the needs of people uh, in our state. And, I'll be honest, uh, states like Maryland taking leadership when it comes to fighting back against uh, big pharma uh, on the cost of prescription drugs, that certainly helped us focus in Washington to get those kinds of provisions in place at the national level. Um, and our entire delegation uh, worked very hard on pushing that forward over the last few months, finally in the Inflation Reduction Act. We now have the ability to negotiate uh, with the pharmaceutical industry on behalf of the Medicare uh, program. Everyone in our delegation, two senators and most of the members of Congress, certainly uh, Dutch Ruppersberger wanted to be here today, had a conflict, but wanted me to uh, extend to you his appreciation of all the input that's come to help us push this forward. Uh, so Dutch asked to say hello. Um, we worked, Dutch and I, very closely with the other former member of Congress from Baltimore City, Elijah Cummings, who was, was the vanguard. I mean, he was the one who introduced a standalone bill. It was called the Elijah E. Cummings Lower Drug Cost Now Act. We named it for Elijah. It was H.R. 3. Um, and it was designed to push back against the pharmaceutical industry and say, hey, you've got to make these drugs more affordable for everyday Americans out there. So Elijah was kind of our beacon. We all stepped behind him in the Maryland delegation. Dutch and I did, the two senators, others, Kwaisi and Fume, and the others in our delegation uh, to make this happen. And we're so proud of, of what we were able to achieve in the Inflation Reduction Act. Let me just give you a couple of the highlights, and then I'll, and then I'll move on. Uh, what this will do, first and foremost, for the first time ever, the Medicare program, on behalf of 40 million Medicare beneficiaries, can now go into the marketplace and negotiate the cost of prescription drugs for a certain category of the highest cost drugs. For years, that industry had a stranglehold on policymakers in Washington. From the time I got to, to D.C., I could see that. They had a lot of lobbyists, they put a lot of money on the table, and they always got their way. But finally, we were able to break that stranglehold, and now, for the first time, we can negotiate pricing on some of these most uh, significant drugs. So that is a huge step forward for the Medicare program. Uh, secondly, it will cap the out-of-pocket 
uh, prescription drug spending at $2,000 per year for Medicare beneficiaries starting in 2025. This is significant for thousands of people in the state of Maryland whose costs exceed that. Their out-of-pocket costs exceed that. And when you're paying that much for drugs, it means you're having to cut back on other things that you need. It's just not affordable. So by putting that cap in place, we're going to make a big difference. It's going to make a big difference for a lot of um, Medicare beneficiaries across the state. Also, we know that insulin is a really, really important um, prescription drug uh, to address diabetes, and we want to cap seniors' out-of-pocket spending on a monthly basis at $35. The Inflation Reduction Act achieves that as well. It also makes sure that all vaccines will be available for free to our seniors starting in 2023. That's really, uh, really important. And the final thing I wanted to say about the bill is because we're now making sure those prescription drugs are more affordable when Medicare goes to buy them, this bill is actually going to save the federal government close to $240 billion over the next 10 years. So it reduces the deficit. It helps seniors in terms of their costs. It lifts up our Medicare program and pushes back against that stranglehold that the pharmaceutical industry has had. But most importantly, it's listening. It's an example of President Biden and members of Congress listening to the American people who for years have been saying, please help us with the cost of these prescription drugs. We have done that. There is always more to do. But this is a great start. Thank you all for being here today. And Vinny, thank you again. Thank you so much, Congressman. And I'm um, especially grateful that you mentioned Representative Cummings. We all loved Representative Cummings, sad when he left us, but he left us a legacy. And, and thank you for building on that legacy for the Inflation Reduction Act. Maryland is very fortunate to have agencies at the state and city level that are working hard. I want to recognize um, uh, uh, Teresa uh, Battaglia from the Maryland Health Ex Connection, the Maryland Health Ex Benefit Exchange. Thanks for being here. The exchange has done so much to really imp implement the Affordable Care Act in Maryland so that we now have only 6% uninsured. We want to do better, but we was down from 13 or 14%. So thanks. The exchange for all you've done. And Maryland Healthcare Access, I'm going to take a bow back there. A great organization that helps get people enrolled. If you're not enrolled or know somebody who's not enrolled, go see Maryland Healthcare Access and they can help you. Thank you. And at the city level, we have really great folks here, including the Commission on Aging and Retirement Education Services, part of the Health Department. And one of the co-chairs is going to speak with us, a guy, Jim Campbell, who also happens to be the president of the board of AARP Maryland. And many of you will know one of the great legislators in Maryland for a long time who did so much for so many issues. I'm thrilled to know him as a friend of mine and a great Baltimore leader, Jim Campbell. You know, it's really great to be here. It's really great to be in person, uh, even though we're wearing masks. But it's great to see everybody. This is such an important event this morning. I want to thank Healthcare for All for putting it together. It's just wonderful uh, and is celebrating a very important topic for our citizens here in the city and across the state. I'm Jim Campbell, co-chair of the Baltimore City Commission on Aging and Retirement, uh, Retirement Commission on Aging and Retirement Education. Our commission is appointed by the mayor, oh, is appointed by the mayor to provide guidance to the city regarding the needs and aspiration of older adults in the city. And all our members are very committed to that, at that issue, and I think one of our commission members is here this morning, Reba Corman. I want to introduce her. Uh, oh, there she is. And then a former chairman of the commission, Dr. Alan Jensen. Nice to see you over there, Dr. Jensen. The commission is especially concerned about the ability of older adults in Baltimore to gain access to pay for the health care they need. Affordable and accessible health care is a vital need for all our citizens, but for older adults, it's the foundation of our ability to maintain our independence and ability to enjoy a good quality of life. The cost of prescription drugs is a key part of health care cost. According to the federal government, pres prescription drug prices in the United States are more than two and a half times higher than those in other countries. Drug spending is driven by a relatively small number of expensive specialty drugs, 
Specialty drugs represent 50% of the total drug spending in the United States. What does this mean to our older adults in Baltimore? It means that some of us who are facing most serious health challenges and who are most likely to need some of these specialty drugs may not be able to afford them. And what we found is that residents or who are in this situation have to choose between paying for food, rent, utilities, and their prescriptions. This may not be able, they may not be able to afford their Medicare Part D pre premiums and copay. Fortunately, because of the work of advocates, Healthcare for All, and our wonderful legislators in Washington and Annapolis, the state is making a difference in addition to changes in how Maryland addresses the issue. The commission encourages everyone to look at prescription provisions of the newly passed Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, and I think you're going to get into more of the details of that uh, later. And, um, but as co-chair of the commission, I'm pleased to stand with these colleagues up here and partners today as we continue the fight for affordable health care for all adults. So thank you for this opportunity, and thank you for caring about this important topic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jim, for all your leadership over the years on so many issues. And, and now, you know, we're big fans of the Baltimore City Health Department. Dr. Leticia Giraza does a great job as the head of it, but we're thrilled that Deputy Commissioner Hyang Chen is here, who helped so much to put this event together and to help uh, everybody uh, in Baltimore to live a better life. So, Deputy Commissioner. Good morning. I'm actually going to take my mask off. There we go. Um, it's good to be here, and, and, I, and I say that with a lot of um, joy because it's, this, the center has been closed for a little bit um, through the pandemic, and it's great to see it here in a staple in the community. And I want to just, um, before we get started, really just acknowledge the Waxter Center staff and my, my team at the health department. Um, as Vinny had mentioned, I'm Hyung Tan, Deputy Commissioner at the Baltimore City Health Department, and I bring greetings on behalf of, of our Health Commissioner, Dr. Letitia Shiraza, who sends her regrets and cannot join us today. Um, but this morning, I, I do want to acknowledge the important work of our partners here, our congressional leadership, city leadership, our mayor who was here earlier, members of the Commission on, on Aging and Retirement Services, and our friends and partners at Maryland Healthcare for All and AARP Maryland. Collectively, they've been working on this issue for, uh, they, collectively, they've been working to advocate for affordable prescription coverage for everyone. This has been an issue for 30 years, and finally, we're here today. As the Area Agency on Aging in the Health Department, we talk to city residents every day and their caregivers, and and they're not asking for much. They're only seeking, older adults are only seeking to age in place in their homes in Baltimore City and to maintain their independence and to age with dignity. But in order to do so, you have to be able to pay for basic things like prescription, food, utilities, home repairs, and in-home care services. It's just not too much to ask for older adults who have raised their families and contribute to our society and continue to contribute to our society. They need to afford basic needs like affordable prescription drugs. And as advocates for older adults, we believe that getting help for these financial needs are the baseline of our country. So today we're here to help as well as listen. I have members of my team and we have various partners and nonprofits here to help people who need access to healthcare insurance and affordable drugs to do so. Um, I particularly want to acknowledge our Medica that Medicare open enrollment starts within one week from today. Um, on October 15th, and our state health insurance information program is here to help support older residents to navigate the Medicare enrollment process or to help change whatever plans you may need. So to, to make an appointment or to access support, please just go visit one of our team members in the back and we'll be sure to help you. Um, but again, it, it is my pleasure to be here, bring greetings on behalf of our health commissioner, and, um, and I thank you very much for being here. Thank you. 
Thank, thank you very much. When Maryland passed the Prescription Drug Affordability Board legislation in 2019, it was the first in the nation to do that. And it happened because we had strong support from groups like the State Medical Society. Dr. Jensen, thank you for being here. Thank you, Medchi, for your support. 1199 SEIU, where's Claudia and Lorraine? Thank you for 1199 support. The Impact Project, Stacy, thank you for your help. And so many leaders of the NAACP, we have Jonathan McKinney back here, a broad coalition. The faith community played a big role. We have Gary Gillespie from the Central Maryland Ecumenical Council, who there, the faith community. So many groups came together. For the first time in American history, a state defeated Big Pharma and enacted something like a prescription drug affordability board. It wasn't all we wanted, but it was significant progress. That board was created with the authority to make high cost drugs more affordable for state and local governments. We're gonna hear about how we're working on that. We're gonna need further legislation at some point to give them the broader authority to make high cost drugs more affordable for everyone. But it really, really has been a success. And other states are following our lead. At least two states, Oregon and, and Colorado, have, in, have enacted similar laws and many other states are, are working to follow suit. So this is tremendous progress. Several things have happened. One, the five members of the board were selected. Terrific people, all of them, including um, Dr. Obera Onokawa from Baltimore City, appointed by the speaker, who's really wonderful, and um, the chair, Van Mitchell, former health secretary, a terrific leader. Their first big decision was to pick their um, uh, executive director. And we're thrilled that the person they picked, Dr. Andrew York, couldn't be better suited for that position. He's a lawyer, a pharmacist, very, very smart. He worked at the federal level on prescription drug affordability and has brought some incredible passion and smarts and understanding to this position. And we think that under his leadership and Van's leadership, the board will really lead the nation in making high cost drugs more affordable. And now he's gonna tell us a little bit about where the board is and what we think is next. Dr. York. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Andy York, and I'm the executive director of the Maryland Prescription Drug Affordability Board, and I'm here on behalf of our board members. Um, first, I wanted to thank Vinnie DeMarco and the Maryland Healthcare for All Commission for putting such a great event together and for being such great supporters of our work. Um, I also wanted to thank our city partners, Mayor Scott and uh, Deputy Commissioner Tan, uh, for hosting us here in this great space, and then also our legislators, uh, especially uh, Representative Sarbanes. Thank you for uh, your great leadership. Also, some of our stakeholders uh, and community members, uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Connor, thank you for your support. Uh, but I also wanted to thank everyone, and probably most importantly, everyone here today, uh, because we are here to serve our Maryland neighbors. Uh, we are here to uh, basically, you know, take your interests and move them forward. So uh, hearing from the community is, is one of the most important things we can do. Um, I'm here to provide a quick update on our work. Our board members were lucky enough to participate in forums similar to these a few years ago, so we're now here to provide an update on, on what we've been uh, doing since then. Um, first, I did want to address the Inflation Reduction Act. There's been a lot of talk about that, um, and I just want to say how excited we are in Maryland that this uh, act was passed. We think it perfectly complements the work that we're doing. One of the biggest frustrations we had or concerns that we had in, in the work that we were doing is we can um, do our work for Marylanders, um, but Medicare particularly is controlled at the federal level. So we had a lot of older Marylanders that were coming to us and letting us know that they were having trouble affording their prescription drugs, and that's you know uh, technically outside of our scope. So uh, we were doing what we could, but seeing the leadership and, and amazing progress at the federal level um, gives us a lot of compliment, uh, confidence, and it helps us uh, do our work. So um, I think the, you know, the work that we're doing perfectly aligns with the federal work and, and vice versa. Um, so, as was mentioned, the Prescription Drug Affordability Board was created in 2019. Uh, we are the first in the country and we are an independent agency with the sole purpose of protecting Marylanders from the high cost of prescription drugs. Uh, we spent our first year basically standing up an independent agency. That actually takes more work than, than uh, I think anyone expected. Uh, but we're there now. So now we are um, actually doing the work of trying to make prescription drugs more affordable. The first thing we're doing is putting out a report, um, hopefully coming out shortly, that uh, basically does a deep dive on all the drivers of what um, 
causing affordability challenges for prescription drugs. As you can imagine, it's an extremely complex and opaque market. So actually identifying how to make prescription drugs affordable um, was the first thing that we had to do. But we have released our first series of recommendations. Um, these are the recommendations that basically have the shortest runway, things we think we can get done in the next you know, six months or so. The first one was to move forward with something called our upper payment limit action plan. So we have the authority to set upper payment limits. Um, the, you know, uh, it basically allows us to set payment rates for specific drugs. So we're doing a deep, it's a, a lot of work now, so if you tune into our meetings, for example, we'll be doing uh, pretty technical work on how do you identify the drugs that would be subject to these upper payment limits, how do you set the upper payment limit amount, and then how do you actually implement that. And these are all very complex questions that we're working through. Next, um, we recommended moving forward with the transparency plan. One of the biggest challenges we have in the prescription drug space is that uh, there's the list price that everyone can see, but it's often completely unrelated to what the net price in the system is. And this is usually because of kind of, uh, you know, backroom deals called rebates, and no one really has any insights to what the true cost of the drug is, including policymakers. So uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is actually identify where the, the challenges and, and uh, drivers are in the supply chain that are causing affordability challenges. Um, and a lot of that is going to be coming through, shining light on, on some of those darker spaces so we can understand um, where the, the problems actually are. And then finally, the last thing we're doing is uh, trying to implement an insulin affordability program. Um, so the Inflation Reduction Act sets the Copay cap at $35 for um, seniors uh, on Medicare. Um, Maryland uh, also took a leadership role when they passed their $30 copay cap for insured Marylanders in the last legislative session. But this does leave a gap of uninsured and underinsured patients. So we're trying to develop the pr uh, program to kind of capture uh, and protect those patients as well. So that's our, again, kind of our. our immediate list of to-dos, um, and then we'll be taking longer-term plans, uh, hopefully in the, in the near future. So with that, um, I, I, again, I would just reiterate that the, the reason we're here is for our Maryland neighbors, um, and hearing where you're actually having your affordability challenges is, is probably one of the most important things uh, that we can do. So uh, we look forward to hearing everyone's feedback, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. Th thank you, Dr. York, so much, and Dr. York will be available for questions, but I want to just emphasize the board is doing a great job of setting the stage to, as he puts it, put upper payment limits on what state and local governments pay for high cost drugs, and we hope ultimately for all of us. It is path breaking, and the rest of the country is watching. And uh, Representative Sarbanes, we thank you again for the Inflation Reduction Act, which helps people on Medicare and provides guidance for all of us working, uh, working on this issue. So thank you so much. Andy, for that uh, for that presentation, and and uh, I just want to introduce a couple other folks. No organization did more to enact the Inflation Reduction Act and the Prescription Drug Affordability Board than uh, AARP, AARP nationally and AARP Maryland is at the absolute forefront. And we're thrilled that Jim Gutman is not only an ARP later, leader, but also on the Stakeholder Council, which I'll talk to you a little bit about, which advises uh, the board. And he's been with us at these forums, talking with folks about AARP's role so, and, and, and also the Stakeholder Council. Let's hear for Jim Gutman. Thank you, Vinny. It's great to be here. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm here actually wearing three hats. Uh, the first one uh, Vinny just alluded to is uh, AARP Maryland, where I'm pleased to be on the Executive Council. You've already heard from our President Jim Campbell, and uh, Jim led us in uh, joining with many of these other wonderful groups and with Vinny's group in uh, the work to pass the uh, uh, law in 2019 that set up this board. And of course, AARP nationally had a big role with the help of many of you who uh, contacted your congressman and uh, wrote letters and made phone calls to support the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, you got a real good summary of the major provisions of the act from Representative Sarbanes. I just want to maybe elaborate on a couple of these things that uh, people really need to appreciate what a, a wonderful change this is. And that is uh, one of them. In 2024, uh, the uh, law will eliminate the 5% coinsurance that uh, people who have the highest expenses in Medicare for prescription drug plans under Part D pay when they enter the so-called catastrophic coverage phase. And 5% may not sound like a lot, but when you get to that phase, you may have 50,000 plus of expenses and 5% uh, amounts to a lot of money. So this is another wonderful provision 
uh, in this uh, law. And uh, as uh, Representative Sarbanes mentioned, uh, creating the $2,000 out-of-pocket cap that starts in 2025 for Part D, also really important. Uh, I'll mention uh, briefly uh, my role as a SHIP counselor, uh, that state health insurance assistance program. I counsel for prescription drugs uh, only, and I only do it during the open enrollment season. But in that work, I see and I hear from people who are spending $50,000 or more uh, on prescription drugs. Under this law, that will stop in 2025, and that's just a, a tremendous achievement. Uh, so uh, the second uh, hat is, uh, as Vinny mentioned, that I'm part of the stakeholder council whose job is to assist uh, the Prescription Drug Affordability Board. I represent the public and in particular, I think I represent the seniors, partly through my AARP vote, uh, role. And uh, they are the people who have the biggest expenses uh, for prescription drugs uh, demographically. They are also very often the people with the least money uh, to pay for that. So uh, we need to reinforce that. We need to reinforce for seniors uh, how much uh, of a burden this is. Uh, fortunately, we have a wonderful board, and Andy is an, a terrific executive director to listen to us and listen to our ideas, but we need your ideas also uh, so we can present them in the right way. Uh, and that gets back to the third uh, hat, and that is uh, as a ship counselor, and uh, I want to remind people, as uh, you heard from the, the city's uh, deputy health director, open enrollment starts for people on Medicare October 15th, runs through December 7th. Uh, during those sessions, I hear a lot of stories about the specifics, way, specific ways in which people are burdened by unaffordable drugs. I can't use any of that material directly in talking to others because those counseling sessions are confidential. But when, if we can hear from you today or afterwards via the methods that he mentioned, about the specifics about the problems that you're having affording uh, uh, drugs that you need. That's going to help us, it's going to help the board, and uh, hopefully it'll help Congress do even more than it already has. Uh, so for all of those reasons, I I'm glad to be here, and uh, thank you all for being here. I want to thank again the Commission on Aging and Retirement Education Services for helping to put this together. I know Claudia Balog, a member of that commission, is here, is also with 1199 SEIU. Thank you, Claudia, for all your work. Uh, and um, I want to say the Baltimore City delegation has been unanimous for all these laws. I want to thank them. President Bill, Bill Ferguson has been a leader. We also thank President Senate Bill Ferguson, Speaker of the House Adrian Jones, have been real, real fighters for this legislation. And you, you heard mention of legislation to uh, put a cap on what people in Maryland pay for uh, insulin beyond the Medicare cap and the Inflation Reduction Act, and that was from uh, Delegate Jocelyn Pena Melnick, who was the lead sponsor on our uh, Prescription Drug Affordability Board, now is the chair of the Health and Government Operations Committee. Ma uh, Maryland is very, very fortunate to have such great uh, uh, legislators. And none of this could have happened, as I said earlier, if it hadn't been for our coalition. And uh, the faith leaders have played a critical role in that. And we're thrilled to hear now from one of the top faith leaders in our state, Reverend Dr. Uh, Sandra Connor, who's the first woman head of the Baptist Ministers Conference, Night Conference of Baltimore and vicinity. We're thrilled to have Reverend Connor with us. Reverend. Good morning, or is it afternoon, to each and every one of you. I'm glad to be here this morning. Um, we've heard a lot of good news, exciting news, and what I want to do is just take a pause break for just a moment. I want to go back because it ought to be a celebration. I heard that, first of all, that Merlin is the first to have a prescription drug affordability board. We ought to give a hand clap and celebrate that. I also heard, if you were listening, that Merlin is fifth in the nation to have one of the best health care systems that there are. You ought to again applaud. I heard that because of what they're doing over there uh, in the 
uh, getting enrollment for health care and all that we've down moved from 40 some to trying to get to 6% again, we ought to give a hand clap for that. But you say, if I'm representing faith, what does that have to do with the well? It's like this. Faith and health comes together, makes a big difference. We realize when you bring health and faith together, it does bring about some healing for the people. We also realize the scripture and believe in the scripture that says in 3 John, that beloved, I wish above all things that, you're, that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prosper. We believe that kind of stuff. Churches and faith leaders are trusted people. We're the ones that people come to more often now than ever before to come to us to help move projects uh, forward, to try to get connected to the people. You all have been very involved, along with your faith leaders, your pastors, etc., to get this information out to the people, to even be involved with some of the, the forums that we're having. Again, you ought to give yourself a hand clap because you're here today. And you're hearing a large number. You may have been to the one that we had before at Ina Pratt Library or whatever. Whenever you do those kinds of things, it makes a big difference. And us being able to gather the data that we need to get what we need to take to the legislature to show that this is what the coalition is doing. This is what the people are saying. We know as faith leaders that it just does not work. We're concerned when a, a, one of our congregants come to us and say, look, pastor or, or priest or whomever, I, I can't pay for my medicine, I can't pay my time, I can't do whatever because I've got to make a choice between whether or not I get my prescription, I pay my rent or whatever I need to do. We're excited about the Inflation Reduction Act and other things that are going on that you hear about today because it does make a difference. We know that if people cannot afford their prescription, their drugs, that they cannot be healthy. We want people to be healthy. We've embarked on programs and initiatives that make a difference whereby we want to have our faith leaders even connect early on with the, our patients, our congregants when they're in the hospital. We want to know early on that if you're even in the hospital, what's going on. We want to make sure that you get connected to your primary care doctors and et cetera. We are engaged, we're involved, we're doing more and more from a faith perspective to try to make a difference. And we think. Uh, God, I have to say it, forgive me y'all if I'm out of order, but I have to thank God for the fact that we, thank you, for, for what he's allowing us to do and what we have accomplished, for the fact that we've been able to move things forward the way we have and, and the, the opportunities are being brought before us. We need you all to continue to give us your stories. We need you to tell your stories. Tell it to PDAB, tell it to Healthcare for All. Tell your story so that somebody else might benefit. You know what we say in church, no test, no testimony, no story, no whatever. We got to tell the story so that somebody else might benefit, somebody else might do better and might be able to benefit and get healthier as a result of what you're saying. So we encourage you today, we're going to be around today to share and ask you questions about that. And of course, you've heard about healthcareforall.com that you can go to as well as PDAB to, to let us know what your stories are. But more importantly, we want to let you know if you have any challenges or any problems, we want to let you know that we may not be able to solve them all, but we're willing to hear from you. So we might be able to consider how to advocate for you. And that's the purpose of the faith leaders and what we're all trying to do here, to, here today. We all need to work and come together. It's all about unity. It's all about everybody being healthy. It's all about us having a healthy Maryland, healthy people, healthy everything. And we know that's a holistic health. It's not just your body, it's mind, spirit, and body. All things need to be cared for, and that's what we're aiming for. I want to just simply say to you, you've gotten some paper that you have on your seat. Please take them home. You may not be uh, one that can fill it out or sign, uh, sign up or anything, but there's a resolution form. We'd encourage you to read it, see what we're really working on and moving forward as it comes to this health care uh, resolution for uh, the prescription drug affordability. We encourage you, maybe you got a doctor or a dentist or a hair stylist, whomever, maybe it's a business, maybe you have your own business. We encourage you to fill out this form and send it back to us to become one of our coalition partners. We can't do this by ourselves. Faith without action is what is dead. Let us get busy. Let us do things. Thank you. Thank you. Reverend Connor, you are an inspiration. One of the other laws that we recently got passed uh, was the Health Equity Resource Communities Act, 
which provides over the next five years almost $60 million into communities to help reduce health disparities and health inequities. And some of that money through the Maryland Health Care uh, Commission uh, um, uh, is going to uh, GBMC. And we have uh, Dr. Scott Wyman here from uh, GBMC. Uh, Dr. Wyman, you want to say hello? And um, they are running a program to reduce uh, diabetes, particularly in, in, in these areas. And in your, on your desk, on your chairs, is a packet of information about how you can connect to the GBMC project. And afterwards, uh, Dr. Scott will be around to talk with you. It's our goal to help make that program work so that people who have, can be prevented from getting diabetes, and if they have diabetes, we can help get them the treatment they need to reduce that, that scourge that's in our, in our community. So Dr. Scott, thank you for all GBMC is doing. Um, so we're gonna open up to questions in a minute, but first, well, I wanna have some closing words from our hero, Representative John Sarvates. Thanks, Vinny. Vinny's kind, because I asked him if I could get back up here for a particular reason. I did, before I close, just want to um, thank Reverend Connor for emphasizing the stories dimension of this. I can tell you that when we were trying to pass the Affordable Care Act, what made the difference was patients who came to Washington and told their stories. It was incredibly powerful. And Elijah Cummings used to say there's great power that comes when people convert their pain into progress. We definitely saw that at the federal level. We've seen it here in Maryland. The stories that you will share, the information you provide, makes all the difference in the progress we see going forward. But the reason I wanted to come back up is because I was sitting there and I was remembering, as you know, my father was in politics for many, many years. He lived in Baltimore City. And um, whenever we would drive down Maryland Avenue without fail, and you know, remember, this is somebody who accomplished many, many things over the course of 36 years in Congress, uh, national things of great import. But when we would come by the Waxer Center, he would point to it and he would say, I mean, I got some resources for the Waxer Center. He was so proud of this resource for, for people here in Baltimore City. So I want to echo what's been said by others and thank the staff here, the professionalism, the residents. This is really a beacon in our city. And thank you for being part of this event today. Let me turn it back over to them. Don't we love that Sarbanes family? <laughs> yeah, big hand. Sarbanes. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you all very much for being here. At this moment, three things we want to do left. First of all, remember the websites, healthcareforall.com slash rxinput healthcareforall.com slash rxinput, and PDAB, pdab.maryland.gov. Secondly, we want to open up to questions. Then don't leave without our picture. And uh, Representative Sarbanes, you got to be in that, so you can't leave until you get in that picture. And then after that, our, our team will be here to take your questions. Dr. Scott, Wayman Scott is there for questions about the GBMC program. We got Maryland Healthcare Access Maryland, the commission's folks, Deputy Commissioner told you about the teams from Baltimore. Everybody's here to talk with you. So at this point, any questions from anybody, audience or media for anybody on the panel? Okay, all right. Anybody need a mic for a question? Looks like we've answered them all. Okay, well thank you very much and don't leave without the picture. All right, thank you everybody.